In this video, let's have a look how we can test for heteroskedasticity. So the first one we're going to look at is going to be this Goldfeld quant test. Now let's recall what we did in the previous video to show some examples of heteroskedasticity. We had a graph where we regressed the food expenditure of one individual based on his income. And what we notice is that when income increases after a certain point, the variation in food expenditures becomes larger. We can see it here. The dispersion of the dots of the data around the regression line, around the green line, is becoming bigger. Why is that? Because people have different preferences for food expenditure. Some people want to spend a lot on food when they have a lot of money. Some people still are going to stick with cheap food, with basic food, even though they are really rich. So that was the idea. Now, how can we how can we test that? How can we make sure that this difference in variation across the regression line is significant and it is not happening by chance? How can we know that we have significant heteroscedasticity? Well, the idea is this. We know that heteroscedasticity happens when the variation of the error term is not constant. So what is the variation of the error term? This is the variation. It is the residuals, the error terms, this ones, the one that I'm drawing right now, the differences between the actual observations, which are the blue dots, and the green uh, the green line, which is the regression, uh, the predicted uh, values, the difference between the real values and the predicted values, this, these lines right now, these are the residuals. So these residuals to the power of 2 are the variation. So u, which stays for the unexplained term or the residual term, depends, you know, depends how, how you note it, to the power of 2 is showing us the variation. So we want to prove that this variation is not constant. Now what is the relationship that we're trying to prove? We're trying to prove the relationship between the variation of the error term and the independent variable. Because we see that as income increases, as the independent variable x in our regression line increases, then the outcome variable has more and more variation, which also means that the error term has more and more variation. So what we're going to do, we're going to translate this graph into the relationship between the variation of the error term and the independent variable. So that's what we're going to test, the relationship between the variation term u, so this one to the power of 2, and the independent variable of income. Now, with all this, and we know, we know also that um, these residuals are increasing as income goes up. So actually, we're going to have pretty much or very similar graph as here. We will have very little variation for low levels of income, but as income increases after this threshold, for instance, it will increase. The variation will increase. So we will not have a, str uh, a strict linear relationship between them because after a certain point, that variation is not constant anymore. The variation of the error term is a function of the independent variable. Now, with that said, we're going to see in the next video how exactly we run the test.